think throughout the book there's a lot of lessons for, for everyone who, who picks up and reads it. Is it was that intentional, uh, Ben, or was that um, something that was just a byproduct of your experiences? I learned a lot. I, it was like having therapy for about a year when we were writing this book, you know, and it's why we do what we do, you know, and why we played the game that we play and what, what, what it means to us. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the time, when you get to high-pressure elite-level sport and you get into professional rugby, you can lose sight of that. You know, and, and, and then that actually, I think, means that you don't, doesn't bring the best out of you. And when I was in Fiji and like we talk at the book about my first week where, you know, union's bankrupt, I'm not getting paid. My boss is a dictator. My line manager is a convicted murderer. You know, you've got all this stuff going on and one of the boys' legs has been cursed. And yet on the field, like in training, when it's just an, you know, an undulating pitch and an, an old warm ball, but the boys are just, so happy, also so amazing and skillful, and you see exactly why you love what you love and, what, and how you think you can help and how they're helping me. Kind of, I guess that thread goes through the book that there were, I, I left England, a bad version of me, needing a reset button, and I had this massive red one that Fiji managed to push for me, you know. Whether it was like, I remember last year I went to Singapore Sevens and Jerry Tuai comes up to me after the, the game in the tunnel and goes, oh, where's Ben Ryan? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I can see a fat Ben Ryan, but where's, where's the Ben Ryan? And it was like, that was the Fijian way, you know? It's like, if ever they say, oh, you're looking really well, it means you put on weight, you know? And, and, they, and they, it's just, they're being honest. And uh, it was the same for me that, I, you know, you, you, working for England, you go and have an interview and you've got the PR guy telling you, right, this is what you say. Don't say this. You can't say that. Not allowed to talk about that. It's like, well, I just be myself. I'm not trying to start fires on purpose, but rather than just keep it in and, and not be honest to myself, I'll, t I'll tell the truth. And, and this book, you know, it has probably, you know, there's, it will ruffle a few feathers. I've also talked about the breakdown of my marriage. Um, all as a consequence, really, of, of this reset in Fiji and reminding yourself that, as corny as it sounds, you know, we, we only have one opportunity, we want to make the most of it, we want to be grateful for what life gives us. And I suppose as a result of that, maybe I have become more open than I certainly was in England, but I've gone back to perhaps how I feel I should, I, I want to be, you know, and you don't have any regrets about saying stuff. People will have an opinion on that and that's cool, you know, you, you don't say things to be liked, you say things because it's how you feel about stuff. And uh, I hope people take it in the right, in the right manner. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a real, I've really enjoyed telling the story and hopefully people will get their bits out of it that, that they'll align to too. There are so many twists and turns, you know, and I kind of use the analogy of, of, of the Pacific climate, you know, we get beautiful blue sunshine and then before you know it, bang, in comes, uh, in comes uh, the rain or, the, or a cyclone or, and, then, and then everything clears again. And that was Fijian life, you know, and, and it was also, I guess, a mirror of what I was going through internally as well. The, the ups and the downs, the realisation that some very significant things are going to have to change in my life. I had to, on the audio book, we had to have a few takes on the chapter around Pio's wife dying. Uh, that was because when I start talking about it, uh, and I remember visiting his wife, um, it, it was very real, you know, and I, you know, you, you, I went through straight through the, the gate to see his, um, into, into the house, and you know, one of his kids runs at me and jumps on my art, leg, and I'm, you're dragging her into the house, and then you, I remember it really well, and remembering how young she was, and remembering just how much Pio had to go through, and then I, I didn't pick him for the Olympics, you know, having, no, you know, all of that stuff um, was very hard to do and sitting down with all the boys about that was difficult. Um, and there were, there, there, were, there were lots of things I saw in villages that made you feel absolutely grateful for everything. Uh, another, you know, I just put up a picture on Instagram, like me and Rapati, our manager, went into the interior um, to a tournament, like, no, and we were in a little truck and these kids were on the side of the road, you know, and we just, Rapati says, let's, just, let's see what happens here. We just pulled over and said, hey, do you want to lift back to the village? And there's these five kids, they all piled in, they didn't know I was in the front until sort of uh, I turned around. 
and then it was like a vibrating van for the next half an hour. All these kids screaming and shouting. And then when we dropped them off, we couldn't just drive off. We had to wait for all their families to then, for them to prove that the story was true, that I had picked them up. And I put that photo up on Instagram yesterday, just flooded full of these really rich memories of happiness. And you know, kids that have nothing, yet yeah, they're just so grateful for, for living in the moment. And we just forget about that too much. And I forgot about it. So there's tons of little things like that in the book, I suppose, that reminds me of what's important. I appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Good luck.